Hey guys, SuperModdy here, back with another video, and yes, we have the newer, more different AMD A10-7870K from last year's AMD A10-7870K. Now, though they do have the same names, there are a few different features and spec bumps that we have in this year's model. Starting off with the actual CPU socket, we're running the familiar FM2 Plus socket, but you will need a new motherboard to actually run this as well. There's a few changes in things like chipsets and those kind of things that will set it apart, though it will actually fit in a different AMD uh, FM2 Plus socket. It won't exist exactly work. So you might have an FM2 Plus socket, but like what this one is, it doesn't exactly work. So for testing, we used a different motherboard to what we have here today. So the AMD A10-7870K is, well, very similar to last year's model, but there are a few slight differences. So it has four cores at 3.9 gigahertz with a small boost up to four gigahertz with an unlocked multiplier, which means we can overclock this thing until we're pretty much happy with what speed we've achieved. Also too, we're featuring things like 512 stream process and eight GPU cores, which is a total of 12 cores in general on that chip, but eight of them are GPU and four of them are CPU, so you do need to keep that in mind. Also too, that GPU core is running at 556 megahertz under Radeon R7 branding, which I'm not exactly sure what that means from AMD, but it's part of the R7 branding family, and overall comes in at a decent price point. It also too features some things that are found on more higher end GPUs from AMD, such as FreeSync, DirectX 12, OpenGL 4.4, Mantle, just to name a few. So there's quite a few things that you'd find on higher end cards that are available on this little CPU or APU, whatever you're going to be calling it. The cores themselves are x86 steamroller cores, which are kind of similar, exactly the same as last gen, but this time we have the GPU based on the uh, GCN architecture 1.1, so that's fairly decent there. And overall, feels more of a spec bump in general in that whole thing rather than a whole new APU lineup. Now, just taking a look around the chip itself, it's exactly the same as every other AMD chip with pins on one side and writing on the other, though, except my sample today has what I thought was permanent marker on it, but when I grabbed some isopropyl alcohol to rub it off, because permanent marker does come off with isopropyl alcohol, it didn't come off. So, yeah, and no one will tell me what it is, so I can't exactly rub it off. But yours should have, like, a barcode and what date it was made and, well, the actual name of the chip. But for mine, it just has black, uh, blackout texture stuff, as this was a CPU that I borrowed for someone who got a sample, so um, yeah, not really mine, but yours should just have general writing on it. Now, other AMD APUs in this got a very lineup include A4, A6, and A8, but at the time of recording, they're not available in stores yet. They've been announced and launched and all those kind of things, but you can't buy them yet, so whether uploading this video they'll be available or they're not available yet or something like that, we're not exactly sure at this time, so stay tuned for that and we'll do a full roundup in all the AMD got a very lineup once they're all available. So, testing. And well, speaking of testing, we ran the Gigabyte F2A88ZUP. Four, which is a bit of a mouthful to say, I wish Gigabyte would really change the naming, but that's what motherboard we ran for our testing. We also too ran our sort of standard 16 gig of RAM, 1866 megahertz DDR3 of course, and our usual SSD 1080p monitor and things like that. Now for GPU, we ran the R7 240. Now that was used in dual crossfire mode or dual graphics mode, whatever they're actually calling it now, but we did run tests of just the APU and then the APU with the actual video card. And well, here are our results with the games that we ran and well, just about all all of them ran on 1080p higher most of the time and all of them got decent 30 FPS as a minimum. When we put in dual graphics mode it definitely did jump up but not as much as I thought it would actually look like. Now looking at the numbers the chip is actually fairly decent clocking in at over 30 FPS in just about all the games we threw at it and blowing away the competition even on the AMD side so in terms of performance per dollar you're definitely getting a good bargain here and well in most cases it was able to blow out of the water just about everything else on the market today. Day, so you might want to keep that in mind if you're trying to build a small form factor little PC there. Now if we compare specs, performance numbers and then actual performance and all those kind of things, we see it's actually fairly similar to last gen. So overclocking this thing, what did we get? Well we didn't exactly overclock it because well we ran out of time with it and this is my last day with this CPU. But I was able to do a sort of a really quick one though I wasn't able to validate it. I managed to post it at 5 gigahertz underwater so whilst it was able to hit 5 gigahertz I can't exactly exactly tell you whether it was a stable overclock, I can't tell you what temperatures I got to because I was like 5 gigahertz, yep it booted and then we shut it down to do this video. So can't exactly give you the numbers unfortunately but in our full roundup we'll definitely get into overclocking and I guess the crunch question does come at this point. Should you throw out or sell your old AMD A10 for this new more different AMD A10 and the answer is simply no. There's not exactly that many features that you can actually benefit from at the moment from this new APU and the performance increase 
is really, really marginal over last year's AMD A10 7870K. So overall, whilst it is still a good APU, it's not something you would want to go out and throw last year's A10 in the bin for. If you're looking for raw CPU performance, this thing will definitely not deliver for you, unfortunately. Go ahead and look at something from the uh, FX lineup or something from Intel where they're actually more focused on the CPU side, or if you're looking for a fairly decent solution, this would definitely offer you a fairly good solution in that. So if you're building a small media box, this is definitely what you'll want to look at because everything is included on that little chip. And well, the FPS per dollar is also too pretty good. But if you're looking to upgrade, this might not be it. And if you already have an A10, it might be worth chucking a video card in there, some SSD into the problem, or maybe some RAM might actually help you out. So in all, the A10 is still an amazing chip and AMD has once again come out with a fairly high performance chip for what you're actually paying for. And for an all-in-one solution, this is also too pretty good. So overall, guys, like or dislike the video accordingly. Let me know what you think of the A10 7870K 2015 edition and would you be looking into this or would you be looking into something different? So guys, Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a sub if you like what we're doing and I'll see you guys next time for another video.